Hey guys, welcome to this vlog that's structured more like a main channel video because it's more about my life and I don't think people on my main channel care about my life. So yeah. Lack of self-esteem aside, before I was filming with a DSLR or this G7X or this Canon Vixia or this Flip or even my first iPhone, I was filming YouTube videos on these. Have I piqued your interest yet? Are you falling asleep? If so, oh, I'm glad I uploaded this to the vlog channel. But yeah, my first YouTube cameras! We're gonna be unboxing them, reviewing them, and actually using them to shoot a video. Also, I'm gonna throw in some stories about why I'm so nostalgic for both of these. Stay awake! Before I begin, I should mention that these are not my original cameras. I recently bought these off of eBay after feeling nostalgic and paid extra for the boxes. The original cameras I no longer have because they broke and they were destroyed by me. Shocker, I know. So yeah, I can't wait to relive these after many, many years. First up was this Insignia camcorder my mom bought for me when I was in middle school. The best way to describe Insignia is, well, you know Walmart's great value brand? This is Best Buy's great value brand to this day. I forgot how much we paid for it, but judging by the fact that it's a great value Best Buy brand, also refurbished, I'm gonna guess pretty cheap. So yeah, not much quality here, but back then this was my first, so I was over the moon with this. This camera was bought for me close to when my YouTube channel was created. Judging by the copyright date, I think it came out in 2010. And there have been main channel videos that was filmed with this camera, but those have long since been deleted. 5 megapixels, 720p HD, and, uh, different languages! I actually don't recognize this box that much because back then we were kind of broke, so we had to buy this thing refurbished. And it came in a generic looking box. So let's see what I've been missing out on. Here are the instructions. I'm a little bit nostalgic about this, as I remember reading a bit of this back then. Some AV hookups to connect it to a TV. I think I remember trying this once with our old CRT. Too many software discs. I don't remember getting this one. I don't remember... OVO. And this Insignia branded one. I kind of remember this, but at the time we had a MacBook with a slot loading disk drive and these couldn't go in otherwise they'd get stuck. So yeah, I don't know what's on this or why a camcorder needs computer software. Also the reason this isn't a main channel video is because I want to keep everything as pristine as possible. Don't want to destroy something for the lols. Ah yes, I remember this generic kinda sketchy charger that came with it. This takes mini USB, so mini USB cable. And finally, the camera itself in this carrying case. Ooh, I wanna touch it. Oh, nostalgia. So yeah, the first thought you're probably having is that if you're around my age, it kinda looks like the camcorder from the Disney Channel show, Good Luck Charlie. Yeah, when I brought this thing to school, I got a decent amount of people saying the same thing. I actually like this form factor. It's comfortable to hold, and you have good viewing angles. Let's plug this into charge, and move on to unboxing the next camera first. The next camera we have here is the Kodak Play Touch. As the name suggests, it has a touch screen. And honestly, I did not have many fond memories of this camera. But yeah, it shoots in 1080p. A step up from this camera, which means it's better, right? Wrong. I hated this thing. I remember my mom also buying this one for me shortly after I broke this one. I'll get into that later. Also, almost all the YouTube videos I filmed on this camera are still up on the main channel. Notably, the oldest board smashing video that's still up on the main channel was filmed with this camera. I don't recommend you watch that video because that was pre-puberty. That's how old this camera is. Judging by the copyright date, looks like this also came out in 2010. And it came in a lot of fun colors, but yeah, we got the black one. I remember we got this used at a bookstore that also sold electronics for $50. At the time, it was a really good deal, but looking back... Ugh. I'm sure this is one of the reasons Kodak went bankrupt. We have a Kodak branded wrist strap that still has the plastic protection on it. Same AV cords for older TVs. 
but this time we get an HDMI cord for connecting it to a modern TV. And here's the camera itself, where the seller generously used a Ziploc bag. Judging by the design of this camera, I would safely say it's a flip camera clone. I wanted a flip camera instead back then, but these were still pretty expensive at the time. Flip cameras were pretty famous at the time for having a built-in USB arm that does this. Let's see that again. And I had to settle for this. Ugh. You versus her crush. Let's charge this thing up too. Yep, this is depressing. Okay, it wouldn't charge with any AC adapters I had, it just kept on boot looping, so I had to break out my old MacBook Pro. It's kind of funny, because this is the same setup I had back then. Back to the insignia. Can we pop in an SD card? Yes! So funny story about the first refurbished model I got from Best Buy, when I tried to pop the SD card into that one, it wouldn't lock in, it would just go in and pop out. So my solution at the time to fix that was to wrap an SD card in duct tape and shove it in there, and the friction would keep it in. Also this part with the buttons would fall off a lot. And when I told my mom about this problem, she tried to return it to Best Buy, but they wouldn't accept it for whatever reason. So since Best Buy wouldn't take it back, what we did was buy a brand new one in store, then swap out the brand new one with the old refurbished broken one, and return the old refurbished broken one in the brand new one's box. So yeah, I kind of remember seeing this box brand new at one point when we did that. So yeah, with the brand new one, the SD card actually clicked in and stayed in, and this cover stayed on. Good. I like this button layout. You can take a video or a photo at any time. My modern cameras won't even let me take a photo while it's in video mode. Also, I'm pretty sure this thing had digital zoom, but this zoom thingy is still pretty fun to play with. Joystick for setting different modes, playback button, pretty standard. And one simple feature on this camcorder that I loved was this built-in light. I wish more camcorders had that. One thing that I don't miss though is this manual macro switch. It doesn't have any autofocus. And you had to remember to have the switch in the right position depending how far away you're shooting something, otherwise the picture would be blurry. But yeah, enough rambling, let's boot her up. Oh, I forgot that it all turns on if you flip open the screen instead of having to press the power button. That's neat. Does it do the same for shutting down? Yep, pretty cool for a cheap camcorder. <laughs> and I remember that pleasant startup noise. But yeah, here's the OS, battery life, it's on auto, I think that's the SD card storage meter, photos taken, uh, how long you recorded a video, and it looks like it's already shooting the max resolution it supports. What else can you do? Yep, 720p is the best. Stabilization? Let's turn that on. Oh, looks like if you're shooting in 720p, you can't do stabilization. Motion detection. I remember this feature. It's a fun feature where if there's a lot of motion, it automatically starts recording. I guess it could make for a great security feature, but I was also big into ghost hunting shows at the time, and I thought this would make for a good ghost hunting camera because you can set it up and have it automatically record when there's motion, like a ghost passing by, whoa! What can you do in the art section? Auto, auto. Nothing has changed much, that's what I usually still do. In the settings, we have a lot. Timestamp was a dumb feature. When I first got this back then, I had it on because I like seeing the date and time when I'm shooting. But it turns out if you have that on, it permanently prints the date and time in big font in your video, so I turned that off after I saw. Let's set it to the correct date and time. Ooh, the max year is 2039. Still 17 years before it becomes obsolete. We can erase card. I don't have anything on this card, so that's good. <laughs> Little Microsoft loading icon. Oh, I was reading the interface wrong. The card was unformatted, so it just showed up as a full SD card. But now we have 10,000 photos, that many hours of videos, and an empty SD card. Any other settings? English, help text, yeah, simple mode. It's not simple enough, let's see what that does. Just removes a lot of settings. Okay, let's turn that off. TV format, when you want to plug into a TV, file format, AVI. Let's do MOV for Mac. Pretty basic menu and settings. Honestly, it's a lot more intuitive than some of the modern cameras I have. The zoom. Yep, it's digital. And looking at the macro switch, you can see my hand is kind of blurry now, but if I flip it, it's slightly less blurry. And finally, if we push right, we turn on the- I forgot it has a digital light, whatever that means, I think it just makes the picture brighter. Push it again, and we can turn on this actual light. Nice! 
And oh yeah, I almost forgot. This thing had a removable battery. Still holding a charge over 10 years later? Let's just do a quick test photo. An advantage of this swivel screen. You can see yourself. <laughs> Very old school shutter sound. And let's do a quick video. Hey guys, this is a test of the Insignia. I'm not reading out the full name of it because it's very long and just has a bunch of numbers and letters in random order. Okay, bye. Playback. Oh, and it even separates movies and pictures. Yeah, the interface kind of looks more dated here. Movie. And. Play. Hey guys, this is a test of the Hmm. <laughs> Microphone and speaker are kind of decent. I just realized there's a dead pixel though. Ugh. But yeah, simple and easy to use camcorder. I had a lot of fun shooting with this. Let's move on to the camcorder that replaced this. Now the Kodak Play Touch. This one I bought from eBay still has the promotional stickers left on it, like mine did when my mom bought it. I just now realized there's another way to charge it without a computer. There's a micro USB port that I didn't see. So yeah, that's a mistake on my part. And the seller was kind enough to include an 8GB SD card. Ooh, that SD card slot is kind of sticky. The logo is starting to wear off on this one. I think my old one, the logo wore completely off. And it also requires a manual macro switch. Ugh, oh, one thing I do not miss about these old camcorders. Let's see if it charged enough through that MacBook. Ooh. Yes! So yeah, you think with this huge screen you're gonna get a huge recording area, but no. This is it. Most of the screen is taken up by these huge icons, which if you couldn't tell by the name, are touchable. Change it from video mode to photo mode. 5 megapixels, like the last camera. What's in the settings? Video resolution. And yeah, go up to 1080p. Share. Uh-oh. They didn't wipe it. Safe mode, no idea what that does. I don't even know what safe mode on a computer does. Oh, I just tapped that and it gave me info. This is actually a pretty useful feature. You can control the microphone gain. Cool, I guess. Ugh. This touchscreen is awful. Sounds an LED. This does have a recording light, which is nice. LCD glare shield feature. I don't know what that does. Oh my god, this touchscreen. It says I have LCD glare shield on, whatever that's doing. Digital image stabilization. Not limited to 720p. It has face detection. I don't remember this camera having this many features when I had it. Language... Oh my god. Before we format the SD card, is there anything on it? Nope. Let's just format it for fun. Yeah. It even has Instagram filters, yeah! Using the zoom on the touchscreen is pretty awful though. Ugh. And digital, what were you expecting? This thing also had a gyroscope, so you can take portrait video and photos! This thing was way ahead of its time. The only physical button on the front is to start or stop videos. Everything else was done on the touchscreen, which is what I hated about this camera. Let's take a photo first. Of course, there's no screen to see what I'm taking a photo of on this unit. 3, 2, 1. I like the camera shutter sound more on this one. And now let's do a video. 3, 2, 1. Hey guys, I'm coming to you live from the Kodak Play Touch. That sounds like a kind of dirty name, but yeah, whatever. I hated this camera. That's all I have to say. And if we play back, we have to turn it sideways and watch it full screen, which is one of the only advantages of this screen. Yeah, whatever. I hate this camera. That's all I have to say. Hmm, pretty decent speaker, and it's not even up all the way. Ooh, you can also tr- Ooh. Ooh, you can also trim videos. Trim videos? You can also trim videos! or extract a frame out of them. But yeah, the huge downside of this camera was the touchscreen, as you just saw. Along with being not that responsive, the touchscreen on my unit just whacked out. To elaborate on that further, 
certain parts of the touchscreen on my unit just died out, so the stuff on that section of the touchscreen you couldn't touch. And as you saw, the touchscreen is kind of starting to die in this unit because it's kind of hard to tap this trim icon. Takes multiple tries. Also on my unit, the touchscreen kept on getting more and more broken where if you wanted to tap the playback icon, I would have to tap it in some random place like right here or right there to access this button. Or if I wanted the settings, I would like tap right here and then that would open the settings. And sometimes it would get stuck on photo mode, so to turn it back to video mode, I just had to tap endlessly right here until it finally worked. But yeah, it kept on getting worse and worse and it would be impossible to change any of the settings or use any of its special features. I love that it has a headphone jack and a microphone out port if you're into that, if you really want to plug a big microphone into something that should be portable. Normal. Macro. Normal. Macro. Normal. Macro. I do not miss this at all. And this one also has a removable battery. And yeah, that's it for the Kodak Playtouch. RIP Kodak. But yeah, these were the cameras that kickstarted my YouTube career. Thank you. But what would happen if I used these cameras to shoot a main channel video today? Hey guys, welcome to Board Smashing. Today, I'm going to be destroying something I didn't know I was going to be destroying when I had these cameras. A MacBook. And so with that, good luck, Charlie. Ah, damn it! I have the time step on. Ugh. To end things off, you're all probably wondering, how did I break these things? For the insignia, I broke this due to dropping it. Not just one drop, but many drops. Because for some reason, back then, I was really into getting POV shots of the camera being dropped. Ooh, it shut off. Does it still work? Yep, woo, that would have given me PTSD. But yeah, I kept on dropping it to get those shots until it stopped working. I was a special child. I did destroy it for fun, but I never filmed the destruction due to having no camera. Sad. As for the Kodak Play Touch, I never abused it that much. And one day, it just wouldn't turn on. I thought it was the battery, so I ordered a replacement one, but when I put it in and charged it, it still wouldn't turn on. So yeah, I completely destroyed this too. There's still a video of me abusing it after it died, shot on my 3DS, and I remember completely destroying it in a series of vines. That's right, vines. Too bad they aren't accessible anymore and no one archived them. Sad. So yeah, these will be nice keepsakes from my early days of YouTube. And so with that, thank you guys for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!